is astrophysics this is telescopes lesson four this one's on collecting power and then we're going to compare some telescopes do a comparison question so collecting power so the collecting power of a telescope is a measure of how much energy per second it collects so it depends on the area of its, of its objective as well as the power per unit area of the incident radiation So for the same power of incident radiation, if you're comparing different telescopes, collecting power is proportional to the area of the objective. So, so hence, sorry, an objective diameter of 20 centimeters will have four times the collecting power of one of 10 centimeter diameter. It will also have twice the resolving power, which is the Rayleigh criterion, which we did last lesson. So what we can say is that the collecting power CP we'll call it, is directly proportional to D squared. So if you double the diameter, you'll get four times the collecting power. So it's important that you remember that one. All right, let's move on. So what we're going to do is to compare a cheaper and more expensive telescope. So you're gonna to have to use not only the collecting power you have to look at the Rayleigh criterion and indeed the magnification. So that was all covered in lessons one to three. So if you want to have a go at this one, then I'll take you through it. So a customer is given the choice of buying one of two telescopes. Telescope A has an objective of focal length 100 centimeters and diameter four centimeters and costs 50 pounds. Telescope B has an objective of focal length eight centimeters Diameter 8 centimeters and cost 200 pound. Both are supplied with different eyepieces and you can use either the 5 millimeter or the 20 millimeter. And it says compare and contrast the two telescopes. So, magnifying powers. So that's going to be FO over FE. And the maximum power will be available with the 5 millimeter eyepiece. That's because the magnification is inversely proportional to FE. So, if you reduce FE smaller, you'll get higher rates of magnification. So telescope A is F over FE is a hundred centimeters divided by five millimeters. Obviously you have to change the units to, the, to make them comparable and that'll give you a magnification of 200 times. Telescope B, which is the more expensive one, will be 80 centimeters divided by five millimeters. Once you've dealt with the units, that'll give you a magnification of 160 times. All right, let's move on. So let's now look at the resolving powers. So Rayleigh criterion, lambda over D. So for the same wavelength, so you can pick a wavelength. Again, we've picked 500 nanometers. Telescope A. So Rayleigh criterion comes out at 500 nanometers divided by four centimeters, which gives an angle approximately equal to 1.25 times 10 to the minus five radians. Telescope B, so again, 500 nanometers, we've just selected the same line. The diameter of telescope B is 8 centimeters, which will give you a smaller Rayleigh criterion, which is advantageous, of 0 0.625 times 10 to the minus 5 radians. And finally, let's look at the collecting power. So we know that collecting power is proportional to D squared. So you can just put a constant in there, collecting power is equal to KD squared, for example. So K would be a constant for both telescopes. Telescope A, so four times uh, four squared times K, which would be 16K. And for telescope B, so that's obviously got a diameter of eight. So that'd be eight squared times K, which would be 64K. So telescope B, you could do a ratio of 64 divided by 16, but telescope B has got a much higher collecting power, which is the more expensive one. So to summarize, telescope B is four times more expensive, but it produces twice as detailed images because of the Rayleigh criterion being half. So its resolution will be twice as good. And it'll be four times brighter than telescope A due to its four times greater collecting power. Which you could say to summarize offsets its slightly lower uh, maximum magnifying power, which was uh, 200 versus 160 times. 
Oh, for that one went okay. They can be pretty tricky, those types of questions. Compare and contrast and then summarise. I want to do one more, which is a recap kind of of something that we've done in the previous lesson. So I want to compare the size of moon craters. So we've got the resolving powers of the the Rayleigh criterion of the previous question. So we've got telescope A and telescope B. The moon, we've done this before, the moon is 380,000 kilometres away, or 3.8 times 10 to the 8 metres. I want to compare the minimum diameter of observable craters. Right, so let's have a look at this one. So remember, we need this for each one. And what we're going to find is the arc length, which would be the diameter of, of the crater itself. So let's do the first one. So the angle would be 1.25 times 10 to the minus 5 radians. And then the distance is 3.8 times 10 to the 8 meters. And then what we're going to use is theta is S, <clears throat> theta is S over R. So S is theta, angle in radians, times the distance. So the first one, 1.25 times 10 to the minus 5, multiplied by distance 3.8 times 10 to the 8. So that gives us 4,750 metres, or 4.75 kilometres. Then the other one, same method, S equals theta R. This time we've halved the angle which would indeed halve the diameter of the crater. So I'll just put the numbers in. Anyway, so 0 0.625 times 10 to the minus 5, multiplied by the distance to the moon, I'll just call that D, 3.8 times 10 to the 8. So that gives us arc length of 2.375 kilometers. So we've done that twice now, so hopefully that's okay. And uh, thanks for watching.